Hey guys, Morton from Flip Normals here. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you in 10 minutes how to create superhero armor like we see on Scarlet Witch. So the first thing we want to do is mask out on your base mesh or your character the type of pattern that you're looking for. For this, I'm just going off of some reference that I found, masking out a shape. It doesn't need to be on a high-res mesh or anything. After that, you want to extract it. Click the little circle button to turn off surface smoothness. This helps with smoothing out any unevenness in your mesh. And you want to go in with the move brush and move everything into place and try to really create some more sharp points. This is more easily achievable on a lower res mesh to begin with to really get some nice and, and crisp edges. And add some subdivision. This helps with the shape and you can go in and clean it up a little bit um, after you've subdivided it. After it's been subdivided as well, go back in with the move brush and again tighten up the corners to really get some sharp edges. It can be tricky sometimes with hard surface, so this is a good technique for doing this. And you want to delete the inside, delete the lower subdivision levels and delete the hidden mesh. And then see remesh it to get some more workable topology. Then add some subdivision a few times after you've added some thickness. Remove the creasing that extraction adds and then subdivide it once again just to get some more smooth edges in there. And using the Damien standard brush, we can start creating details. Remember to turn on Lazy Mouse with a big lazy radius and consider turning on Lazy Snap as well. This helps us just snap to the previous place where the Damien standard brush sort of left off. Now we want to go in with poly paint to create some other details. This is just a different way of adding details. It's a way to outline what we want to create. I'm just using the standard brush with dynamic sizing on for consistency. Go in with the Damien standard brush afterwards and just start cutting in to sort of the pattern that you've, you've laid down before. It just helps you to visualize what the final thing is going to look like. Now an important thing for masking, because we're going to do a lot of that, is to go up under brush and tablet pressure and under size and RGB intensity, you want to turn these all the way up. So do this while holding down the control button to only affect the masking brush. And then we go in, start masking and we do this slowly, lazy mouse enabled, large lazy radius to keep it consistent and to get a really nice smooth mask. We're doing a lot of masking when we create costumes like this. So it's important to save your wrists and the masking settings there just really help you be able to do this for hours and hours on end. Now afterwards, hit the comma key, go to brush, find the smooth brushes and then the smooth stronger brush. Not a lot of people know about this one, but it's really helpful for certain um, cases like this. The smooth stronger brush here, we can help us push in the, the pilot part of the mesh that's been masked out. Then we go over it with the clay brush just to add a little more, I guess, organic feel to it. Now after everything's been sculpted out, we want to go on the inside with the Damien standard brush just to clean the edges up a little bit. You can lose this when you use the smooth stronger brush. And then we just continue masking. Sometimes you're lucky that areas like this require you to just use one brush size and you can just do it in one fill sweep and you're all good. Go back in with the smooth stronger, clay brush to flatten it back in with a Damien standard just to clean up the edges a little bit and then just do that for all the other parts as well. <laughs> now a really cool trick with a Damien standard brush is that you can hold down alt to pull out the geometry and that way you can go on the outside edges or I guess the contrasting edges and pull up some of the geometry. All this just helps a little bit with the realism. Now sometimes you only want to use the clay brush after you've masked. It's not always a great idea to use the smooth stronger brush because we do lose some edge, lose some edge details. Now in this case, I'm just using the clay brush, just going slowly up and down and that helps us preserve the edges um, and next to the other part of the pattern. Now just rinse and repeat. And then another trick for adding more detail is going over with the standard brush, just the regular standard brush on the outside edges. Now this helps raise the leather just a little bit 
And I tend to do this on the thicker parts of the mesh. So some parts I will use the Damien standard brush just to add a little bit of extra detail. And sometimes it's gonna be the standard brush. Now for bigger surfaces, again, the clay brush is very useful because it adds a little bit of texture. So for big, long surfaces, surfaces like this one, I think the clay brush is, is definitely the best option. Now clean up the details with the Damien standard. So again, not everything needs to be the standard. Not everything needs to be Damien standard. It kind of just depends on the detail level and kind of the thickness of the leather you're going for. And another really cool tool when you've masked everything out is use the gizmo tool. So alt click on the surface and simply push it back in. Again, this is a nice tool to just create a little bit of differential detail instead of using just the smooth stronger. Now let's move on to coloring. So there are a couple different ways to do this. The standard way would be the standard brush with only RGB enabled and lazy mouse and then just go around and start painting everything out. But you can also do this with masking. It's kind of the same process, right? You just mask something out, get a really nice pattern, work on it until you're satisfied. Um, sometimes you need to tweak the, the masking more than you think, but just keep working on this until you're satisfied. Then hit Control W to create a poly group. This allows us to just mask out this area, then go into color, fill object and fill it in. Or you could just use it with, do it with a standard brush as well. So just rinse and repeat these techniques, fill in the tiny little gaps between the, the armor plates or whatever you want to call them to create some some more details and more contrast. Another way to paint as well is similar to what we've done with the masking before is we do it in small parts on the outer edges first. This is to sort of outline the inside shape that we want to colorize. And afterwards you can go in with a bigger brush and then start filling in the rest of the paint. It's kind of like, you know, coloring inside the lines. It just helps us stay inside the lines more easily, I think. Now, once you have some poly paint down, you can go to masking, mask by color and poly paint and drag in on the little toggle here. And then you're masking based on the poly paint that you've laid down. This allows you to create a lot of different kinds of masks. Just colorize it or turn off colorize so we can see what we're doing. And this is a perfect technique for when we're doing something like patterns with noise, for example. Now, we want something that's maybe a little bit of a combination of the two types of masks we had before, one for the red and one for the black. So we can use the mask by poly paint as sort of a starting point for a unique type of mask. And again, you just wanna go and clean this up, be as meticulous as you like. The more time you spend on it, the better it looks. After that, control W to create a poly group based on your masking. One thing you gotta be careful of though, is if you go up and down the subdivision level, uh, when you have high subdivision levels, it will screw up your, your mask. Now on to our surface detail. So for this, I've just found an alpha online. So I'm going to go into the surface noise and turn off the noise scale, color blend as well. Then go into my browser, find my alpha. And then remember to turn on relative when you're using 3D. It can help sometimes with the scale and also turn off uh, basic noise, otherwise you're gonna get noise in there. You can see the projection is a little bit weird. That's because ZBrush projects it based on our initial camera angle. So let's mask out the sides because we don't need those. We wanna project only from the front for now, otherwise it's gonna get distorted. Go back in, find the angle. So we're lining it from the front, click the alpha on and off button and I click it again to find your alpha. And now it's being projected only from the front Adjust the details, adjust the size, the strength. After that, apply the mesh, see if it works. Yeah, that's a good amount of detail. And then we just do that for the sides as well. Remember, align the camera to where you want to project from, click alpha on and off, find your new alpha again, project, click OK, apply the mesh, and you're good to go. And now we want to apply leather details to everything but the pattern that we just applied. So it's just the inverse mask. So we'll turn off the alpha. This just leaves us with the default procedural uh, seabrush noise. All right, so we adjust the curve a little bit to get the kind of range we want. We try to apply it to the mesh. Mm, it's not quite strong enough. So we undo, go back into edit, and then tweak our, our strength and the pattern a little bit more, apply it to the mesh until we're happy. 
And that is essentially it. That is how I create superhero costumes for characters like Scarlet Witch or whether it be Thanos or whoever it might be. Any kind of leather and even hard surface armor can be created with exactly these same steps. Just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of patience. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Leave a comment down below, like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.